Now you welcome back to France, Mr. Longi Agoha, fresh from Nigeria. Now the thing we just heard now, it's uh, all about a bus stop, is that? Yeah, somewhere in Lagos, yes. It was um, somewhere along Badagri Expressway and uh, people were just milling around, you know, rushing. On a Saturday morning, I, I take that on a Saturday morning, I had people rushing to get a bus and um, go to their respective jobs or activities. So I, that was something very interesting for me, and I had to take it. Yes. Yeah, very, very interesting because we can see that the city is bustling with life, uh, animated and so on. You can hear people, uh, meh, 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 and, uh, and then. Now, is, is, that, is that how the um, area looks, um, looks like? But that Greece, uh, a place where you hear a lot of noise, and uh, is, is, that, is that the way, uh, the, the attitude of the people, is that the way they behave when they are calling for their, when they are calling their customers to go into a bus or they are doing whatever they want to do? Yeah, because uh, somehow Lagos is not uh, an organized society, organized environment. So people have a tendency to call passengers or call their people, commuters, to come and enter their buses you know, shout out very, very loud the direction they are going to for people to come into their bus and then they drive off. So that's one way of um, attracting would-be passengers to their buses, yes. Now, when, when you mean it's not well organized, can we link that to the culture of the people? Because uh, I think uh, you, you mean not organized in terms of uh, not having stations where people can come straight and then oddly go into a bus, they should be called before they go into a bus, or is it linked to the culture of uh, the negotiations that they should try to, you know, it's a type of, it's, it's a way, um, that's the way they animate or the way they behave when calling their customers. Anyway, I wouldn't say it's a culture, no, it's not suddenly a culture, but then uh, somehow it has, we could, we could ascribe it to a culture now because it's been lingering on for quite a while now. Um, even when I was very, very small, I noticed that people used to shout, talk very loud because of uh, the tendency to hear loud noises and all that. So people tend to talk very, very loud. And so passing, uh, those bus conductors who uh, call passengers to come and enter their buses need to shout. If they don't shout, people, the passengers will not hear them. And if you don't hear the, where you're going to, you're not going to get the bus. So, so that's it. So you need to shout very loud to really uh, attract passengers to your bus. Yes. Now, after so many years of living in Europe, and uh, I think um, it's, it's true you go to Nigeria every year. Now, going back to Nigeria this time, and come, that's the, we are in the month of August, were you surprised to see the same scene again, the, like what you said that happened when you were a child? Not, nothing has changed. Yes, nothing has changed. Really, nothing, nothing has changed. I, I, that, that's, I, that's, that is why I'm beginning to believe now is becoming a culture or becoming a part and parcel of the people. I don't, I don't know if it is possible to remove that aspect of shouting or making noise because people find it very, I don't know, soothing to stay around. Uh, let me give you a story. It right. that happened. Yes, to, to, to a week ago. <laughs> Somebody who was playing music very, very loud on the street. He's selling, you know, cassettes and CDs and all the rest. And he bought very big speakers and put them outside and was playing very loud. I went to him and said, why, is it possible to lower this music? He just looked at me as if I fell from heaven. So that, he didn't say anything, but the, the fact that he looked at me really summarized the whole thing, that this guy 
you don't, I mean, you like you're not here. You're not from here because <laughs> it's a norm. It's yes, becoming yes. a norm. So yes. Noise making it has become a part and parcel of the people. Yes. Yeah, but you call it noise making. For for them, it's not noise making. That's what I'm saying. That uh, for them, it's not noise making. But someone who has stayed outside or someone who's very foreign to Lagos or yes. someone who's just coming into Lagos for the first mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. would be surprised to see that. We were surprised to see how people shout, the noise, the, the decibels and all the rest. It's really outrageous. Very, very outrageous. But then, people go around, even small children do not complain. So that's very strange. Yes. Okay, let's go to the next recording and um, find out more uh, about this wonderful city called Lagos. Now, the second um, topic or subject will be God everywhere in Lagos. So, it's, um, why are there so many churches in Lagos? But what I know is that some smart people there are using other people to enrich themselves. That's what I noticed. You mean the pastors? Yes. Many of them, those ones who are smart, they, they know that people need to believe in one thing or the other. And then they are really riding on that. They are trying to use that as a as a saddle to walk on. Okay. And that's not very good. It's not very healthy because of the fact that poverty is everywhere. And in during the churches you would see most of those pastors asking their followers to pay tithes, mm-hmm. contribute and all that. And that, that's the area that I don't like very much because of the fact that they are selling hope to these people. They are trying to tell them okay. that hope, they should believe in one thing mm-hmm. and that if they want their world to be better tomorrow, they should believe in God. And so everything revolves around God, 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 Jesus, Jesus, and all the rest. But the lots of those people are not improving. You see, so the, 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 the pastors, are, they know this, but they are still using that or using God as a way of enriching themselves. Mm, so let that's me, not very good. Yeah, well, let me refer my question the other way around. There, there's a need for spirituality in Lagos and so many parts of uh, Nigeria or in Africa. Now, do you think, uh, going uh, coming back to Lagos, do you, do, do you, mm, yeah. Mm. But now, do you think these churches are improving their lives? Because there's a need for spirituality. God, God is omnipresent in Lagos. Yes, but I, 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 I don't know if I would say, if I would categorically say that it is improving their lives. I don't know if I, if I say that if I'm right. You talked about poverty. Yes, because the problem is that many of them are poor. And so if you, if you, if you consider that, if you use that, that one as a yardstick, then it is not okay. because they are still praying and praying and poor. You okay. see, even it looks like the more you pray, the poorer you, you are. are. <laughs> you see, so that that's that's the area that really they really very strange to me. You know, ninety percent of them are very poor people. The poor, the rich ones are those who are at the top. top. Those who manage the churches, yeah. they are the rich ones. They are the ones who ride big cars, flashy cars. The poor ones come with their. You know, ten toes. You know, they come, they come on foot, and and then at the end of the church, they are requested or they asked to contribute their meager salary, their poor situations, to pay tithes, and that that's the area I don't like. Okay. So they, they are trying to rip people off okay. because of that, and that's not very good. So for me, it is not improving their lives. Okay. Really, it is not. For me, the, the little I've seen of them, they are not getting better. Because they believe in God. It's not true. Now, let's go to the soundbite here. The, the pastor uh, who was preaching on the street of how the Holy Spirit and uh, blah, blah can help your life and... Uh, uh, security around your life. So, why did you record that scene? Because I, I felt that that man w- was trying to sell, f- sell false hope to people. You see, 
one thing that really revolves around all my all the recordings I did was the hope. Okay, people they trade on that because they know that people are hopeless and they want to give them hope. Selling their dream. That's right. Mm. So that that's where that's really revolting for me. I don't like it. I don't. It's a kind of ripping people off. You rip people off. I, and you can't believe it. This was on a Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. As early as 7 a.m., I was I was walking. Oh, I went out walking. I just wanted to go and do some exercise, and I heard that guy shouting, blah blah blah, and stuff like that. So I as I, I stood somewhere and then tipped what he was. I just listened to what he was saying. I really shook my head. I said, No, this is not the way to see God. If what he's saying is the only way, then that's not for me the only way. Okay, because for me, believing in God is empowering people to do something with their lives with their hands that is real empowerment and not shouting god said this god said that god is because at the end of the day nothing you, you are not going to place any meal on that on that person's table and so for me that's wrong really can you describe this pastor for us how 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 does he look Long, long beards, uh, what? Um, I, anyway, I saw him from from afar. I saw mm -hmm. him. He was standing about fifty meters from me, mm -hmm. and they were standing. They were sitting. He was. There were people in the room or in the church, and he was standing very early in the morning, okay. and preaching and shouting. You know, the last speakers outside. Okay. And he was shouting. Okay. And so I was walking across, but the way he was shouting, the noise that he was making really attracted me so I stood by and listened so as I was listening I looked into the church 90% of them were rich people were poor I saw them their clothes and all the rest they were not looking good I say so he was the only one wearing you know, jacket others were just wearing shirts and all that so I, I felt that that was not the right thing you know, it's not the right thing he's deceiving people that was the impression I had. That was what made me to record that. So I, in my mind, I was, I was, I was so pissed off. I wanted to go and tell him to stop. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do that, but I did. I didn't want to embarrass him in, in the presence of everybody. So I, I only take what mm. he was saying. Mm. Yeah. And then in this recording, he was saying that even if you have no life security and uh, your houses, you can open your houses, and so uh, that the that the Holy Ghost and God can give that security. That's the greatest security. That means there's insecurity in Lagos. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they, they are really riding on all the insecurity, unemployment, bad situations in Lagos. People are hopeless, and they want to give them hope. That's what that's for me. And, and to what level is this hopelessness you're talking about? Because of the fact that the roads are very bad. Mm -hmm. The electricity situation is very, very bad as well. Mm -hmm. You need to have money to operate a generator mm -hmm. to have constant light in your house. Mm -hmm. And so when you sleep under such situations where there are no lights, no, I mean, no condition, no fans and all the rest, you know, even to drink cold water is very difficult. And it's very sunny, so uh, it's very very difficult to, to believe in anything. So anybody who comes along to tell you to that if, if, if don't don't trust men, trust God. Spiritual comfort. That's right. That's what people. Okay. Need. Yes. So they, that that's what we, they, they say. Okay, we don't trust anybody again because they've they've you know they they've not uh, fulfilled their dreams or they have fulfilled what they've been saying. So trust in God. You get all other things. And that's it. So people, the smart ones among them, uh, are swimming on that. And that's, for me, very wrong. It's very disheartening. I don't like it. But anyway, the, this is the only way I could express that, you know. Yeah. yeah. We heard in one, uh, I think, two uh, bites you recorded 
nice songs coming out from these churches. Did you enjoy those songs? Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's really... Um, it's, it's a big contrast. Yes. It's a very mighty contrast in the sense that in the presence of those squalor, yes. in the presence of abject poverty, yes. you still see wonderful things around. Yes. And that's, that's, the, that's the contrast in the whole society yes. called Nigeria. It's a, it's a place where from the outside, if you look at it, it's really, you know, not very good. But then when you look very deep down, you begin to see, wow, flashes of good things. So yes, that, that it was wonderful. I had yeah, a good time beautiful in the church. Songs, yeah. Beautiful songs. Yeah. And the, the pastor was preaching, the, the Reverend Father was really he, he he was copying more or less to these new churches. He was, mm -hmm. he was preaching like them. Yeah. Unfortunately I didn't tape it. But then what I had the way he was really doing it was good. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't um, I had I have no qualms with that. You know. So it's it's um, yes, a mixture of um, good and bad, yes. Is, is that an Igbo church, or because uh, they, they were they were singing in Igbo and yeah, you know, they, they, they sing in Igbo, Yoruba, okay. yeah, it's all the mutual, languages, yeah, it's all the languages, okay. yes. But majority of the songs are in Igbo, yes. Thank you very much for no problem uh, for this wonderful interview and. Uh, If you will change something, what are the changes you can advise the governor or you can advise the people in power to do? What, what type of changes do you think? If I were to be the governor of Lagos State tomorrow, yeah. my God, free education first. Mm. Because I have a feeling that 70% of Lagosians are illiterate. I'm not saying that they are not educated people there, but then majority are illiterate. And when you, when, you, when you are in that situation where majority are illiterate, it, it, it's, it's very difficult, difficult. Mm. very, very difficult. Because when you, are, when you don't have one or two things in your head, you have a tendency to, to, to do certain things not, not right. Okay. For example, yesterday, we were, we were driving. To drive for one kilometer, it took us one hour to do that. Mm. So can you, can you imagine that? To do one kilometer took us one hour to do that. On the road. Okay. So it's very, very difficult. So because of the fact that things are mismanaged, lawlessness, bad situations in fact. But anyway, I, I, I ascribe all this to education. People are not people are people are many people are illiterate in, in, in Lagos or elsewhere in Nigeria. And so the level of illiteracy is really high. And if government, if they really want to do something, they should tackle that head on, really. And then as a motivational speaker, um, what, what would be your word of hope for these people that have been taken over by bad pastors and uh, people, they are all running to the, to, to the different churches for refuge, looking for spiritual comfort. What would be the word of hope for them as a motivational speaker? How can you help them? I, well, I, for me, I, 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 I really intend to help um, by first attacking their problems. And their problems first is how to feed. You know, they, they want to eat. But if you eat, if you're not hungry, you can listen. If you're hungry, you find it difficult to listen. So finding a way of, you know, making them feed. Um, as a motivational speaker, I, I would really hammer on the fact that they should rely less on these people they are calling pastors, pastors prophets. That's it. Because they, they are placing all their hopes in them. And that's really, really, really difficult. It's difficult. But somehow I do not blame them because... There, there have been a series of um, disappointments from leaders and all that. So they need to hook on somebody. The problem is that they are hooking on the wrong person. Those guys they are trusting, they are not telling them the right thing. Okay? So I, I, as a motivational speaker, I know I have a lot to do, you know. But if I were to, if I were to really turn the magic wand, I would, I would really hammer on hope.
Yeah!